And here we are for the coverage of America's 10th manned space flight and undoubtedly the most difficult and significant uh, space flight by any nation since Russia's Yuri Gagarin orbited the Earth in 1961. For today, the United States is to attempt to rendezvous and docking, the meeting of two spacecrafts out in space, a vital maneuver if we are to go to the moon, a vital uh, test of the, the program for all future space flight. Charles uh, von Prem is at the Cape with an up-to-the-minute report as we wait for the first launching there scheduled in the next few moments. Charles? Yeah, Walt, uh, everything looks real good down here right now. There hasn't been the slightest delay in the uh, countdown on the Atlas Agena rocket. Uh, as of now, the countdown is going clickety-clack. We should be launching on the hour. The Atlas, one of the oldest and also one of the most reliable space booster rockets, is batting 28 for 30 in its most recent launches. And over on pad 19, 6,000 feet away, uh, Wally Schirra and uh, Stafford will depart there on a Titan II booster, which has a record of 22 successes out of 23 launches from the Cape. Uh, so the weather is cooperating. Everything looks go. But of course, you never know, Walt. That's Charles. Filling you in now on the details of this day, in just uh, three minutes and 22 seconds from now, that Atlas booster with its 360,000 pounds of thrust, it stands there some 66 feet high on top of it at 26 feet of the Agena target vehicle. It's 26 feet long, five feet in uh, diameter, and that vehicle will go up into orbit very shortly. In three minutes from now, the countdown is at T minus 258. It goes up to 185 miles, it is hoped, makes one circuit of the Earth, and then as it comes over Cape Kennedy on its first trip around, the Gemini will be launched atop its Titan rocket. Up in the White Room, they're just about to seal the astronauts Wally Schirra and Tom Stafford uh, into their capsule. The doors are supposed to be latched there just about the time that the uh, Gina is being launched from that pad a little over a mile to the south of them. Perhaps they will be able to uh, see it uh, out the windows of the White Room, although it seems doubtful. They'll certainly be able to hear it because actually 6,000 feet, which is the distance between those two pads, isn't very great. It's 1,500 feet, as a matter of fact, inside the normal safety requirements that they normally clear. Uh, an area that is cleared for all space launches runs at least 7,500 feet for the Atlas. They're well inside that area. That is one of the first of the many uh, dangers and problems of uh, this launch today. The astronauts are, of course, Navy Captain Walter Marty, called Wally Schirra, Jr. He was born in Hackensack, New Jersey, and he's the oldest of all of our active astronauts. He's 42 years old, and he's going up with a man who has not been up before. While he has, of course, he made a six-orbit uh, trip in the Mercury program, which was called a textbook flight, a perfect flight, and he's hoping for a second perfect one today. Tom Stafford is his co-pilot today, an Air Force major, and you see him in his... Uh, seat there. That actually is Wally on that side, and on the other side is Tom Stafford. That's a television monitor that's located uh, just over their heads in the white room up at the 100-foot level of uh, the uh, work erector that will be lowered before the launch, of course, of the Titan. Now the count has reached just one minute before the launch of the Atlas, and here is Jim King at uh, Mercury Control. T minus 50 seconds. Please stay with me. T minus 40 seconds. At this point in the blockhouse at launch, con at launch complex 14, the Atlas test conductor is just looking at a series of lights on his console. These ready lights will turn green. When all of them are green, we will be ready to go. T minus 25 seconds and counting. There will be a momentary hold at T minus 19 when we press the ignition switch. T minus 17 seconds. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. It's holding momentarily at 4. We have ignition. And I'll lift off right on the button, right on the arm.
a gun goes that fiery plume of the Atlas. We haven't seen uh, such a spectacular takeoff in the manned space program since Atlas boosted the Mercury astronauts aloft. Now Atlas, the workhorse of the missile fleet, putting that Agena up into orbit, and it looks like a perfect flight. So far, the takeoff has been perfect. This has to be a perfect one. That Agena has to reach an altitude of 185 miles on a perfect circular orbit. It can be corrected by its onboard the guidance machinery a slight amount, but basically it's got to go into a good orbit if this rendezvous is to be achieved today. We'll know that about 10 minutes from now when this uh, rocket is right going into orbit there over Bermuda. Here is our super long-range camera. Just couldn't be finer. That's Paul Haney at Mission One Control. One minute and eight seconds into the flight. We have an estimate now, a precise estimate on the liftoff time as four seconds after the hour. A beautiful shot with our BU Boston University One minute, camera. 35 seconds, and we should be coming up on booster engine cutoff. That rocket is now some 40 miles high and about the same rate downrange from the Cape. It's been two minutes since takeoff, and we should get booster cutoff now in just a moment. There's two engines of the Atlas, and there it went. There it is. It looked like to us at about two minutes and 12 or 13 seconds. Now the Atlas is on its Atlas single sustainer engine. Shows the word here. At this point, it has escaped the most of the Earth's atmosphere, and a smaller engine can carry it on now with the speed it has been propelled from the uh, Earth with those two big engines on into orbit. Our sustainer engine, which is pushing the uh, atlas Agena combination at this point, is programmed to be shut down at 277 seconds into the flight. We're three minutes in right now, or 185 seconds. The small directional vernier engines operate for another 20 seconds, then they shut down. We then have a coast period of some 42 seconds. And we'll have a small attitude control burn to assure the position of the Agena. By this time, we will have jettison the sustainer and at 362 seconds we begin a uh, about 150 second uh, Gina burn the flight controller here the Agena controller here in uh, Houston has just told Canary she's right on the old nominal line four minutes into the flight of the Atlas Agena Every one of these stages must go perfectly if this rendezvous is to be achieved. Each of these things Paul Haney was explaining to us, that Agena burn means that the uh, capsule, the target vehicle itself, will use its onboard it's propulsion equipment. Everything looking dandy. And it will be pushed uh, somewhat uh, off of the normal uh, launch trajectory by some uh, five degrees. Uh, to aid in the in bringing it into the same trajectory that the Gemini will be launched in uh, some hour and a half from now. Standing by for Seco. Seco. Call it four minutes, 44 seconds. That's the secondary engine cutoff. What we saw there just a moment ago on our screen was the something we call the our orbital map developed by the Colesman company for us. 
It will show as we progress through this two-day this space mission. Flight the dynamics, progress. Uh, says the cutoff conditions look very nice at uh, sustainer engine cutoff, and we have had separation. We had separation about five minutes and 15 seconds in. There is a separation. The uh, Gina is... In perhaps 30 seconds, we should be in a, uh, an Atlas, uh, a Gina, rather an Agena primary propulsion system burn, which will place the Agena in hopefully the orbit we'd like. On our Cosman orbital map now, you see the progress in real time. Our altitude display here shows the Agena is presently about 135 nautical miles high. We're shooting for uh, about a 161 nautical mile orbit. A little faint red line is edging up that altitude curve uh, right on the plan value. That's a red line Six on minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. It's the red line on the mission control map. Our map is not in the same colors as that mission control where these where uh, television cameras are not yet permitted under NASA rules. That uh, 161 nautical miles, which is the circular orbital height of the Agena is 185 uh, land miles up. When the Gemini is launched, and the countdown there is T minus 88 minutes and count. We've had a momentary uh, dropout on our telemetry according to the Agena controller. He says he cannot confirm the start of the PTS of the primary propulsion system burn at this point. We'll watch that not necessarily fatal. We'll watch some other aspects here before we can uh, give you additional information on the Agena burn. If all telemetry is out from the Agena, it would mean that this mission is scrubbed before the Gemini ever gets off the ground. They have to have the telemetry reports from the uh, Agena. That is the only uh, source they have for uh, adequate information from the Agena. It can be tracked by ground-based radar, of course, but that would not be adequate for this flight. Uh, this is a critical moment at uh, Houston as they wait to see if that telemetry can be restored to the Agena. The, uh, there are so many ifs in this program, any one of the ifs could uh, throw it off, uh, but uh, one of the major ifs, uh, if the Agena gets into its proper orbit, uh, or an orbit that can be corrected by its uh, onboard propulsion system, then Gemini will go. But if Agena is not placed in its proper orbit, the uh, Gemini spacecraft with the two astronauts aboard waiting at Cape Kennedy will wait. It will not go. And uh, if uh, the mission has to be scrubbed entirely, the Gemini, of course, will not be launched at all. In that case, here's more from Paul Haney, apparently. Primary transmitter from the Agena, the primary telemetry transmitter, right at about the point when the primary propulsion system in the Agena should have come on. We saw the chamber pressure rise in the Agena, and then we experienced this dropout of telemetry. So we uh, were eight minutes and 40 seconds into the flight. There have been some uh, 20 Atlas launches uh, successful Atlas launches from the Cape since uh, uh, the Mercury Eight program minutes, ended. 50 seconds into the flight. Now we've just had a report come in from one downrange radar, which did see a, an Agena burn. Again, we'd have to qualify that as preliminary information. We're nine minutes in. And according to our nominal value, we should uh, cut off at uh, 555.7 seconds. Mathematicians can work with that one. It's slightly over nine minutes. We should be at about the nine at the cutoff point. That's the cutoff of the Agena burn. That is the use of the Agena jets uh, to put the Agena uh, slightly off the uh, normal course. It would follow on a ballistic missile path. That is, if it had not used its uh, propulsion system, to put it on a path uh, that would be more nearly uh, the same orbit that the Gemini will reach if the Gemini is launched uh, 85 minutes from now as scheduled. However, these are tense moments as uh, Houston waits to find out whether anything has Nine happened to that Gemini. Five seconds in, we still have no telemetry, 10 minutes. We should have had uh, Atlas Agena 
primary propulsion system burnout at this point. This could indicate, of course, that something uh, went wrong in the Agena propulsion system. This is Houston. Let's go back to the Cape now and find out what's been going on here. As soon as we get some additional information on the Agena, we'll come